I'm Mark Green, and I'll take you on an unbelievable ride meeting inspiring automotive enthusiasts. These are the movers and shakers, industry leaders, racers, builders, and the drivers in the automotive industry and car culture. I'll reveal their passions for automobiles and much, much more in their career choices and their personal journeys. Together, we'll unveil their triumphs and tragedies, successes and failures, and drive deep into their lives as they share their stories. You get to ride along with me on the inspirational journey, and together, we'll put the pedal to the metal here on Cars Yeah! All right, these are awesome. I am ready to drive. Looking good. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Hey, Mark, welcome to Southern California yeah. and Hunziker Design. Oh, so fun to be here. I've known you forever, but I've never been here, so this is so cool to be here, and the shoes are awesome, but do you have them in a size 13? I think it's big enough. Ah, uh, maybe. You know what? Now that you got the shoes though, yeah. you're gonna need one of these. Okay. Check this out. Oh man, I'm set. I'm part of the team now. I love it, I love it. Well, let me go throw this on, and then I want you to take me into your studio so we can learn a little bit more about Huntsiker Design. Sounds good. All right, let's, let's go. Cool. I love this. Well, welcome to the studio. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh, the tea. The unwashed tea. I want to learn a little bit more about this special car because I know about this car. I know that it's never been washed, which is a tough thing for me to handle. And there's a little white mouse here that we're going to learn about as well. But tell me a little bit about this car because it's got an interesting history and it's a driver. Can I open it? Go ahead. Cool. So what's the deal here? Well, it's a 68T. It's a sports purposes. Last year, uh, the short wheelbase car. Right. It's got a two liter S engine. It's originally from Italy. It was modified in period. And everything on the car is basically from 1968. Wow. You know, I love the fact that this is a car that you drive, you enjoy. You kind of have a slogan about driving versus washing. What is that? Like you, I'm so busy. So if I do have time, I'm not cleaning, I'm driving. Yeah, I love that. I've got to learn a little bit from you because I'm a little bit of a nutcase when it comes to being clean, but I like the fact that you get in this car and you drive. And since we're talking about cars, there's something else sitting over here we're going to talk about your race car. Now we're going back in time a little bit, although same era because 68, 69, Lotus 51, Formula Ford race car. I used to race, as you know, a Lotus 18, so right. you're a little quicker than me on the track a little bit. in this car. But uh, tell me a little bit about this car and the fact that it's blue has some significance to your family, right? Right. So this is an old uh, Jim Russell school car from Canada. Um, I bought it about five, six years ago. Um, and I actually got the receipts all the way back to when it left Jim Russell. Jim Russell. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a Lotus 51. Um, as you said, it's from a Ford car, and the reason it's blue is because it's painted in the family colors of uh, Bira blue with yellow. So we're going to talk a little bit about your family as we get into more of your history and your art, but uh, there's a car up in the Pacific Northwest where I live, Romulus, right. which is a car that goes back to Prince Bira, who is your? Grand uncle. Grand uncle. So this story just gets in more and more interesting as we go into this whole thing, so I can't wait to learn more. but. Uh, Ah, oh, this tugs on my heartstrings. I love these old race cars. And you've raced this three, four times this year, right? So far, yeah, I'm trying to do maybe three, four, maybe depending on uh, how the purse springs look. But yeah, there you go. try to do a couple, do a couple more this year. I understand. Uh, it's great. Well, maybe I can have a seat, huh? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Oh, Nick, this thing is so cool. It brings back memories when I was racing my Lotus. I had such great times, and uh, I feel so good sitting in this thing, but there's something missing. I think you're gonna need this. Yeah, I think so, I think so. Let's see if I can remember how to put this on. There, there we go. go, locked in, ready to go. Uh, I love this car so much, but you know what? As I'm sitting here looking at this piece of art, you've done some really cool things with the paintings that you've done. You've applied them to a lot of the clothing. The shirt you gave me this morning, I'm wearing it. So let's check out your retail store. I wanna see your full line of all the products you have to sell. All right, let's have a look. All right, cool. So Nick, in addition to the fantastic paintings you do, you do posters, I've seen you work in magazines, articles, online and so forth, but you've got all these wonderful clothes, shirts, hats, awesome, the shoes, we're gonna talk about those more in a minute, but you do something really unique with the way you design your clothing with the artwork. 
Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, as, as an artist, I'm always conscious of the end product and how things look. And so what I wanted to do is when we created this t-shirt line, we did something in my mind unique is that we used the background color of the shirt as part of the design element. So you never just see a box with artwork on it. You actually end up wearing the artwork. You're the background in the painting. Very nice. I love the way it works. It's so cool. It's so cool. I've got so many of your shirts. Every time I wear them, people always say something interesting. How do I get a hold of these shirts? Now, the best way for people to find all your products is where? Come to our website. We have you know various uh, outlets, retail outlets, sure. wholesalers. So Absolutely. You can it. buy direct from you or uh, and when I Google Hunziker, H-U-N-Z-I-K-E-R, the imagery that comes up is absolutely brilliant. I love it. So in addition to all the great clothing, the artwork and everything else, there's also the shoes which you set me up when I got here. I've had some of your shoes before. I love them. Driving shoes are absolutely fantastic. So let's go take a look at the shoes and then I want to talk a little bit about this watch because the fact that you paint on a watch dial face blows me away. So I can't wait to see that. Let's check out the shoes first though. Sounds good. All right. You have so many cool shoes here, and I've been aware of these shoes for a while, but this is somewhat of a new venture for you guys, and I see a lot of references to Steve McQueen, of course, the Gulf Racing colors for the famous Gulf Racing 917s and GT40s and so forth. So what I'd love for you to tell me is a little bit about what makes these shoes unique, but let's start with this one, because this was made for somebody kind of special. Right, yeah, this was a... Uh designed for Chad McQueen, so Steve McQueen's son. Right. And we designed the shoe just with him in mind. And like all our driving shoes, you know, we call them casual driving shoes because they're probably the most comfortable shoes you've ever worn. And in addition to that, it's also a driving shoe. So we built in some features. Um, you know, you like, you have the rounded heel, so you have smooth thr throttle application. We put an abrasion patch in so you can heel and toe. It's real leather, so you could do a track day in them. Um, we put vulcanized rubber, so it's um, anti-slip. Smells like a car tire. Oh yeah, oh, rubber <laughs> baby, I love it, yeah. And as you mentioned before, you know, we're officially licensed with Steve McQueen, so if you take a look at this shoe here, this is modeled after his uh, 69S, which was slate gray. Oh, and I love the old Porsches. I've got a pair of these, I love it. When I jump in my old Porsche, I love wearing these shoes, they're so cool, so uh, I love it. And the other thing is, you look underneath and, it's tire tread design. Right, I yeah. Mean, you thought of everything. You're such a cool designer. I just, <laughs> I love it. It's really cool. And the other thing I noticed that when I got your shoes, it's like receiving this box gift. You pull the box open. It's like opening a, a Apple product. The box itself is cool. You don't even want to throw it away. You've got liners, spare liners, right? Yeah, we put extra insoles in. So, um, you know, and again, you know, now to us or to me, everything's a, a canvas. So, you know, yes. insole, um, so we give you an extra pair of insoles, we put some artwork on it. Um, you know, over here, this one's the, the Mini, also Steve McQueen shoe, because he had a Mini, a two-tone Mini. That's right, that's yeah. right, yeah. Um, this one here is modeled after his driving um, suit that he wore in Sebring, so you oh, got the blue stripes. Yes. Yeah. Um, we got an extra lacing system, so you can see it's got all these extra loops, so if you want a little bit of a tighter fit. You can use those. That's very cool. You know, when I had Chad as a guest on the podcast, he talked about his dad and all these different things. I remember him talking about the Mini Cooper, of course, the famous Porsches that he has and the car that Chad still has. And I know you and Chad are really good friends. You guys do a lot of stuff together. You can go on YouTube and see you guys driving the canyons up here in LA together. So, ah oh man, you're having fun for sure. But there's another thing that you do that I really find unique, and that is the little thing on your wrist there. The watch, yeah, this watch is so cool. You've teamed up with some very special people. I want to go see an example because you hand paint that dial, right? Yes, oh. I hand paint it under a microscope. Holy so cow. So I modify my own brushes. It's only three squirrel hairs that are left. Three? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Squirrels. Because, well, with, with four hairs, you got too much paint and two, you can't release the paint. Oh my gosh. Well, let's go check out these watches. So Nick, these watches are incredible because one of the things about these watches is these are hand painted dials so everyone is unique everyone is different you hand paint these under a microscope using 
a brush with uh, a squirrel somewhere missing a few bristles off its tail, right? Just three of them. Just so, three, okay, yeah. so he didn't get much of a haircut, but they're absolutely spectacular, and you've teamed up with a French manufacturer, BRM, so tell us a little bit about how these watches are produced and what makes them so unique. BRM, as you mentioned, the French uh, watch company, uh, started by Bernard Richards, so that's the BR in the watch. Right. So all the components are made in France, it's got a Swiss, Swiss weight movement, and what's really unique about these watches is that um, every piece in this watch is CNC machined. So they're actually using automotive production techniques wow. in watchmaking. So if you, if you just take a look at this buckle, it actually consists of 13 separate pieces. Uh, BRM never bends their metal. They never use a cast. Everything is CNC machined. So everything starts out as a block of metal. Oh my and gosh. And they CNC machine everything around. Wow, now tell us about the dial because the most special part about this watch for me is your artwork and the fact that this is an original. So I can contract you to paint any kind of car for my personal watch and I'm gonna have the only one like that in the world, right? Yes, we're making true one of one watches. Wow. And it starts out with a brass dial. Here you see it uh, primered, and then that's the background color, for instance, and that's just like when I do a painting. I start with a, with a blue background right. and then, you know, paint on top of it. Great, excellent. And the end piece here in the case of a, an early 911S, one of my favorite cars, but we have a race car, and there's the little white mouse again that we're right. going to talk about in a few moments. And that leads me to our next discussion, which is going to be about your grandfather, who artistic qualities and talents you picked up. And on the wall here behind us is a painting he did in 1932. So our next stop is gonna be talking about the history you have with your family, racing, and artwork. I can't wait to learn about that. Sounds good. Great. All right, Nick, what's cool about you is not only your artwork, but there's some history going on here with your history of art, your family and so forth. So I want to go way back in time. And when I first came in to visit you today, I saw a little white mouse on your Porsche 911. I've seen it throughout your shop and studio here. And I think that has to do with uh, Prince Vera being a family member. And then we'll evolve into your grandfather as an artist and a style that you picked up. But what's the deal with Prince Vera the mouse, and of course, this very special car named Romulus. Yeah, so the white mouse was really um, the nickname of my, it's gonna get complicated now. <laughs> so it's my great uncle's uh, cousin. So my great great uncle was Prince Bira, as you mentioned. He was the first Formula One race car driver from Thailand. Um, before the war, he raced ERAs, and that's where Romulus comes in. That blue car that yes. I know of, yes. And so famously, he always had a white mouse on the side of his car because that was the nickname of his cousin who actually financed all the racing ventures. Oh. So he wanted to let everyone know that his cousin was involved. And his cousin's nickname was New, which was Little White Mouse. Oh my gosh. And the reason the cars are blue is because Bera once met a Danish socialite who had a blue dress and he was known as somewhat of a Let's say, you know, he was a gentleman driver. Yes. And um, he was very smitten with her and the color of the dress. So from then on, he painted all his cars in light blue. That blue. And yeah. which is also why the Lotus that you saw earlier is also in the family color of uh, light blue. blue. So you've carried this family tradition going back to racing. And if anybody goes back and reads about Prince Bera, there's quite an amazing history there. That car, Romulus, I'm mentioning, which is owned by a gentleman I know up in the Pacific Northwest was, if, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the most winning Formula One cars ever, because that car ran year after year, or maybe yeah, I'm exaggerating I mean, it was, a little it bit. Yeah, it was a little bit just before Formula One, so it was uh, what's called Watt Durette Racing, so it's what essentially kind of became Formula One after the war. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he in, in that car he won the Monaco Grand Prix, before it was even known as the Monaco Grand Prix, back then it was known as the Coupe uh, Renier, you know, named after oh, Prince, oh, Prince Renier. Renier. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that car was probably, you know, won all the, the for, uh, what you read or Formula 2 races in its time before the war. And then we move into your grandfather, who was an artist. And we looked at a painting that was on your wall in your studio here, painted in 1932 that your grandfather did. And he used a unique style that you've emulated uh, in some respects. So I'd love for you to talk about that piece of work that we saw and then how that relates into your painting, because you have a very distinct style. 
Right, so that was my grandfather on my uh, father's side. He uh, studied at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, which famously uh, also had Georges Braque. Mm -hmm. And we still have letters from my grandfather where he's swearing off cubism because he thought it was a bunch of hooey. <laughs> because, oh, wow. Because Braque and you know, Picasso at the time, I mean, this is 1920 Paris, so yeah, that's when all this stuff... These guys are doing some really avant-garde right. stuff that people go, what are they painting? You know, in his day, he was an artist, so he, he worked for a shoe company called Bali, which you may have heard of. Yes. So he would do advertising posters, and he was commissioned to do that Bugatti poster um, okay. in 1932. So that's where this very graphic style, I yes. think, emerged from. And so I've kind of always liked that style, and that's kind of the reason why I started painting my own, because mm -hmm. initially, I, you know, we had moved into this house, so for the first time, I had wall to cover, and I was looking for artwork and I couldn't really find anything that I liked. And I thought, well, I like my grandfather's work and that kind of style, but I want it to be with Porsches, but I couldn't find anything. So I just decided to paint my own. So that's so how I actually got started. You're like very Porsche. He couldn't find his Porsche right. car he liked, so he decided to build one. You couldn't find art, you decided to paint it. Pretty much, yeah. yeah that's, that's how very I got cool. started. Yeah. So Nick, that point in time when you became a business and you created this brand, and you started making a living at doing all of this. Let's talk a little bit about how you got to that point and was there a moment in time when you looked back and went, wow, I'm, I'm really doing this now because you've tied yourself to some major companies that are very, very well known in the automotive world. Yeah, I mean, I think that helped me a lot early on or, you know, a couple of years into painting. Um, you know, I'm officially licensed with Porsche. Um, I've, License in the past, I've done stuff with Sterling Moss, 24 Hour Le Mans, right. Golf Racing, um, Porsche Club of America, um, you know, I did stuff with James Hunt, I mean, you know, and McLaren, you know, so it, all these relationships with, with these, you know, fantastic brands that, you know, on one way they elevate, you know, my art, mm -hmm. but it also lends them authenticity because that's what, I mean, you know, to be honest, they don't really need, Porsche doesn't need help designing a t-shirt. <laughs> right. Or McLaren could make their own t-shirts. But I think these these collaborations, you know, help their brand and our brand. Oh, sure. Um, so yeah, that, that helped a lot. You know, the money is one thing, but it's also kind of the recognition because you can't create art in a vacuum. I mean, you can create it in a vacuum, but somebody needs to look at it and appreciate it. And right. you need to build a following. And what you've done is create created a real business around this where you can make a living and provide some incredible imagery for people to enjoy and for people like me who love cars and art and the Cars Yeah audience out there that loves all these things, now they can hang what they would call real art in their living room walls and say, well, that's a Hunsiker. Maybe their spouse who would normally wouldn't let them hang a poster will let you hang a Hunsiker painting in the living room because of, of who you are and the background that you have. Very, very cool what you've done here. Thank really you. impressed, yes. Nick, this has been absolutely awesome. I wanna thank you for all your time. Really appreciate you sharing your studio and all your life with me and with the Cars yeah audience. This has been great. You wanna go for a ride? Ooh, yes, let's do it. Alright, so this is the car that you went to Nova Scotia to pick up and you drove it all the way back across the country to Los Angeles, right? Yeah, we did uh, 4,800 miles. How long did that take? Nine days. Nine days, that's pretty cool. 26 states. Wow, amazing. And as part of uh, telling our listeners here that uh, this is the art car, so explain to me what you mean by the art car, because most people think of BMW art cars where a famous artist paints on a car, which is what I thought you were going to do, but that's right. not what you're up to, is it? No. So what I'm doing is, um, I'm to celebrate 10 years of, of being in business as a, as a you know, professional artist. artist. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I'm doing an art car where I'm building um, my dream 911, and I'm doing the entire build in exchange for artwork. So I've traded this car for two paintings. So you gave a guy two paintings. He gave you a GT3. Well, it, it was a tr it was a it was a three-way trade. So I gave a guy two paintings, who in turn wired the money to the owner who was selling this car. Oh, okay, even more unique. Yeah. Cool. Okay, um, so you've got the car now. So the plan is to take this car and build it into what exactly? Um, it's a GT3 now, and I'm gonna a 2004 GT3, and I'm gonna build it into a 1999. 
GT3R. Whoa. Street so car. R. Now the R, they didn't make many of those. N well, actually, the, the GT3R was actually a race car. Right. And so in 1999, they built two prototypes okay. that they took to Le Mans and raced in Le Mans. And so I'm building the street version of that car. Of that car. Yeah. Awesome. So you're going to trade all the components that you're going to modify this car into using trading art. Yes. So I see. You know, like the wheels, the tires, the suspension, engine work. Regearing the gearbox, all the bodywork. I'm going to do everything in exchange for my artwork. I see. Very cool. So well, that's why I'm calling it an art car. The art car. It isn't. So you're going to build your own whole custom car, trading art for everything. It's a really, really cool idea. I can't think of anybody that's ever done this. I mean, a lot of people do trades and things for cars and swap out parts and things like that. But to end up with a whole car that you've done is a really, really cool idea. So. I can't wait to come back and drive the new <laughs> Hunziker R. That would be pretty cool. All right, boy, that was fun. What a cool car. And I can't wait until you have this thing all done. Your new R version is all built and everything, which would be really, really awesome. Thanks for spending a day with me here. You set me up with some really cool duds, but most of all, thank right. you for thank a, you so a really fun time. time. We'll yeah, and I'll see you a little couple months here, Laguna Seca, okay? Sounds good. All yes. right, thanks, thanks. Nick. take care. Oh man, this thing is cool.